Okay, so I recently did a video about how you can run a Linux virtual machine using Hyper-V. That's this video here that you can see in the browser. And towards the end of it, I included a desktop walkthrough. And I thought that maybe some people didn't see the desktop walkthrough because maybe they weren't interested in virtual machines and Hyper-V and so on. So in this video, I've taken that desktop walkthrough, edited it a bit, added some more things. And uh, this is just simply a Linux Mint desktop walkthrough to introduce you to the Linux desktop. Okay, so here's the desktop. This is obviously the wallpaper. And along the bottom here, we have a bar. Over here on the left-hand side, we have the start menu, which we'll go into in a minute. And then here you have some different apps that are already pinned onto the bar. For example, files and Firefox for browsing the web. Over here on the right-hand side, you have kind of the tray icons, including how you can connect uh, to the network, the sound control, the clock with a calendar and so on. Let's go back to the start menu here. You can scroll through the different types of categories, so office tools, internet tools, or if you have uh, something in mind, you can just search. So you can type calc, for example, to get here the calculator. And here we have a calculator, nothing particularly uh, amazing, you know, exactly everything you would uh, expect. But I wanted to show you how you can use a, a windowed app. You can click here in the taskbar and of course just move it around as you'd expect. This one here makes it full screen. This one brings it back down again. Then the one to the left, the little underline here minimizes it. It goes down here onto the bar so you can bring it back up again. And of course the X closes it. Very familiar if you've been using Windows or Mac OS. The positions may be different to Mac OS, for example, but the principles are exactly the same. Another thing you can access from the start menu is the control centers. You can go up here and click on this little icon. And this is the system settings that allow you to change all kinds of things about your system, the displays, the power, the networking, the mice, the keyboard, and all that kind of stuff. Let's take something simple. Let's go with the background, for example. We can pick a different background. There you go, a nice green one, different one like that. You know, let's just drag that aside, look, okay. So all very, very simple. Now you also notice there, as I drag that to the side, you can do this kind of docking thing where the windows can appear in different parts of the screen without any problem whatsoever. So you can arrange all of your windows as you want. Let me go back to that original one there. So for web browsing, you've got Firefox built in. So we go down here, we click on the Firefox web browser icon, up comes Firefox. You can start searching, you can type in, you know, uh, go to YouTube, for example, here and get that to come up. Things like YouTube will just work out of the box. This is all the standard websites will work uh, without any problem whatsoever. For Office documents, you'll want to go up here to Office and let's say we go to LibreOffice Writer. So LibreOffice is a suite of applications similar to the Office suite. So you've got a document uh, editor, you've got a spreadsheet, you've got slides. So here we can just start to type, this is a document, you know, nothing particularly amazing. We can change the font size here, just as you would expect uh, on a normal Microsoft uh, Office document. Now we can save this. So let's just save that. And we're, I'm doing this now. It notice it says Gary documents. So there's a, a folder called documents. Okay. And we're just going to call it doc one. How imaginative. Okay. Now you can select different types of documents here, including you can save it as different word documents. So that's really, really good. Gives you some compatibility there. We're going to save that. Now, why did I do that? Because I also wanted to show you the kind of the file explorer down here again, in the left-hand corner, click on files. So here it is. We can, you know, we can put it on the dock it to the left there, dock it to the right. We can make it full screen. Okay. But if we go into documents here, here you can see that document we had, of course, double click will bring up the document in LibreOffice Writer, but I also wanted to show you, you can do things like rename, you know, whatever. So you right hand click on it. Okay, scroll down here, rename. We could call it uh, document one rather than doc one. Of course we can copy it. So you can do a right hand click uh, copy. And now right hand click here, paste. Now we get a second document, a copy of it. Okay, anything you could do normally with what you're used to on Windows, what you're used to on the Mac, exactly the same. And you've got different folders for pictures and music and videos and downloads is a very important one. If you download something, that's where you're going to find it. 
Now, another important application is how you install software. So again, to the start menu, click on this one here, which is the software manager. And now basically with uh, systems like Linux and Linux Mint, you get a whole bunch of pre-built applications. You don't have to go scouring around the web for the different things you need. They're all available here uh, under one banner, kind of a store, very similar to the Microsoft Store or to the store that you have on Android, Google Play, or the iTunes store. And here you can find all kinds of things. Look, for example, VLC was just up there, Blender, Audacity, Discord, Telegram, all the things you might want. Now, if you're looking to install a different web browser, of course, we could install Chrome. That would be a popular one. Uh, it's called Chromium because it's the open source version, not the version that comes from Google. So you can search for it. Up comes Chromium. We just click Install. Okay, type in the password for uh, you know authorization to make sure I have the right to install things on this system. And then that will go ahead and install it and then we can run it. Now we can either launch it from here, but you probably won't have that open normally. So again, down to the start menu, into the internet section, there it is there. Okay, we can just run Chromium. Now, of course, we can also pin this to the taskbar, right click on there, pin to panel. So it stays there permanently now. So even if I close that, I can just click on it there uh, and up it comes. So very, very easy to do. All kinds of software in there that you might want to find for development, for music, for video, for whatever. You'll find it in there, no problem. Now, like all operating systems, whether that's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, of course, Android, iPhone, there are software updates to fix bugs and also to uh, fix security problems. And we have here the update manager, which comes built into Mint uh, Linux Mint. And this is the introduction screen. We just click on OK. And it shows me here all of the things that can be updated. So it's a really, really simple. All you have to do is click on Install Updates and it will go ahead and install those for you. It's a pretty painless operation, but something you should do regularly to make sure you have all the latest updates. And the final, final thing to say is if you want to shut down, you can go to here to the start menu and then go down here to shut down and you can shut down, restart and so on. And there you have it. Love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.